So here is my veneer. It's a big sheet of um, Babinga veneer. Uh, I think it's five by five. And I need about four and a half by ten inches, a couple of strips for the top and bottom of the shelf. Um, so the first thing I do is I look at the veneer and I, I'm obviously going to go this way across because I want my, th this is the way I want the grain running. And I see there's, there's a big crack here. So I'm going to try and avoid, try and cut my shelf out of this strip and then cut my shelf out of that strip. And hopefully I'll finish before, before I get to there. So I've got a, just a backer board there to cut on. And uh, for my straight edge, I'll use the shelf itself. And I'll use the back edge of the shelf. Um, all this is is veneered chipboard, which is actually quite a good substrate material for, for a shelf. Um, so I'm going to lay the front edge and I want about an eighth of an inch maximum. If I leave it too long, what will happen is when it goes into the press, this will crack up and it could crack up beyond the edge of the uh, beyond the edge of the of the shelf, which is not good. So I want to make sure that I'm covered all the way. I've got a little indentation here. And I've got a good edge there and I've got plenty of material here. So I'm going to move it back just a touch. And this is a tool that I've only I only got about a month ago, and I've only used it once, which was uh, yesterday when I was doing the the veneering on the other shelves. And it's one of those tools I always used a marking knife, an exacto blade, all that sort of stuff. Did I need a very expensive veneer saw? Well, it's one of those tools that, when you get it, just makes your life so much easier. Um, and it really is a joy to use. So a little hard to convince yourself, and you just sort of put it there, and I find not to use this end, but to use this this orientation of the saw, and you just slide it along, and it is absolutely a joy to use, and in fact the, um, the worst woodworking accident I ever had was when I was cutting veneer and my fingers strayed over the ruler, and I went straight into it with the exacto knife, so a little tiny knife like that, not a power tool, and that was the worst, that, that cut took months to do. So, two passes and I'm done, and now I'm going to go cross grain, uh, just to cut this, I'm going to move the uh, shelf underneath so it doesn't crack. Mm -hmm. Just move it about an eighth of an inch that way so that uh, I'm comfortable using it with my left and my right hand. Uh, which is another, you know, it's a very forgiving saw. You'll hear it crack when you get through. a little bit over here. Yeah. I'll just make sure I'm released on... Okay. Take this out of the way. And there's the veneer. Very nice. Okay, now I'm going to uh, cut the next section. You don't need to see that. So now I'm ready for the uh, layout. And I lay it out in reverse order. So the first thing is my call with the end protectors, and then a sheet of wax paper, then a sheet of veneer, then a shelf, and the underside of the shelf another sheet of wax paper um, another shelf, one side's already veneered 
So we'll just put that that way. Another piece of wax paper. Another sheet of veneer. And finally, another shelf. This way. Okay, I've got everything ready, so uh, I've got about 10 minutes to get this all going, so let's start. Make sure there's nothing here, and lots of glue. You sort of get to know. Um, with experience how much glue is the right amount. Now because this roller is dry, it's going to soak up a lot of this glue. Uh, you'll see that. So I, actually a lot of this glue that I just put on is not going to remain on the, on the, on the veneer. Um, so let's just get it all spread out. I found this is the perfect size roller for for this size of veneer work and get it from the middle out to the edges. What's the right amount of glue? When you put it in the bag, get a little bit of squeeze out, just a couple of drops at the edge. Now the other thing is you've got to know your veneer because my veneer is not paper backed. The paper backed veneers absorb a lot more glue than the uh, the straightforward veneers. So, so a nice even coverage. As you can see, I wear an apron just because the roller tends to splatter the glue everywhere. I've got to go to the office after I've done this. So that should be good. Make sure I'm covered out to the corners. Here and here. Just lay that. Now this veneer will start to curl up pretty quickly. That's the hard, I find that's the trickiest part. So I just want to lay it over so I can feel the edge. Yeah, equally. There. And make sure I'm covered at the front. That's perfect. And we're going to go with this one. There. on top just just to stop it curling up and provide some initial uh, flattening pressure. Just the air paper out. Yeah. Right, let's go with this one. Now you don't need so much glue this time because the roller is already loaded. I don't glue the veneer, I mean sometimes I do, but this is just tricky veneer, it curls up very fast and uh, I prefer to leave a slightly thicker layer of glue on the substrate and that sort of takes care of the need to glue both the veneer and the substrate, if that makes sense. Now I've got some little holes here, I'm hoping maybe I should have filled them before I'm veneering and you know, if I was doing a really fine piece, I mean, obviously, this is trying to be a fine piece, but, you know, if, it, if it's going to be a shelf, and it's halfway in the back of the shelf, so not too worried, especially here, you see it's all the way back. So that's good, up to the corners there. Okay. Just trying to take off some of the excess glue here. That's good, in the middle. Okay, now this was the one that had the little indentation on the, so I'll make sure that's at the back side because I'm going to trim these shots to width when I'm done. Yeah, that's good. Now, here's the hard part. 
flip that there. Make sure that wax paper gets in between. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Okay. Got a crack. So I had one extra shelf that uh, that I felt I didn't have time to veneer. So what I did, I put these in the bag for about ten minutes. And I'm quickly going to take out the call. They're nicely flat. I'm going to take out the call. Yeah. And add it to my shelf, which I've just glued up with the wax paper. Okay. Sorry, camera can't uh, get this. But, um, and I'm going to put this back in the bag. So I'll have my full set of shelves ready at the end of this process. So, it's possible to do this with white glue. I don't know how other glues react. And you certainly don't want it out of the bag for long. There. Now you've got to make sure the, uh, the wax paper doesn't move. Really, not the end of the world if it does at this point, though, because it should be already set. So that's it. So I just added another shelf there. Let's put the C channel back in. So I know I'm not slipped, uh, nothing's slipped, and I'm looking for a little bead of white glue all the way along, or in part, particularly at the edges, and I have it, and running down the side. So everything looks great, and uh, I can just leave this now, come back in a few hours, and uh, take it out of the bag. So it's been about five, uh, five hours since I put the stuff in the bag. Normally I'd leave it uh, for a bit longer overnight, something like that, but it should be enough. So I'll switch the pump off and uh, let's see what we've got. It's always a bit of a guessing game. You know, did, uh, did one piece stick to the other? Did, uh, was there a glue pocket which didn't fill out properly? Let's have a look. So, I like to check the bag. Alright, just slide this out. I'm going to bring the camera in closer to see what we've got. Okay, so this is my call. I'll throw that away now. Did its job. Um, so that's good. You can see here a little bit too much glue so there's that uh, from a previous when I veneered it previously. So I'm going to have to sand all that off. So not ideal. Um, the wax paper off. Looking, feeling for lumps. Should be nice and smooth. Just see if the edges are all good. And then you can have a look uh, to see any glue squeeze out, a tiny bit coming all the way along, which is perfect. So that looks great. Next one. A little bit of glue squeeze.
squeeze out all the way through there. That's fine. Okay. And you're listening as well as feeling, just listening to see if the sound changes. Um, here I've got a little bit of a chip, so I'll have to fill that in. Okay. Feels good as well. There, can you feel that? Can you hear that? That's the edge. That's an overlap, so that's fine. So that was a really good uh, result. Happy about that. The next, the next stage. The next stage is to trim the edges and what I'll do is I'll use a flush trim bit on the back edges because I'm going to be, actually I'll probably just use my track saw to cut, uh, to cut these to width, um, but on the front I'll use a spoke shave. Uh, because this is a very delicate veneer, if I use a router bit it could tear out and it can tear out and it can be quite uh, distressing. So I'll use a spoke shave, a nice sharp spoke shave and go slowly. Um, won't take very long. In fact, I think I did a video on it uh, elsewhere on my YouTube uh, channel. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Um, thank you very much.